good morning we will talk about sustainable development goal number 10 reducing inequalities there is a huge scope for you to work in this direction there is massive inequality and the existing policies practices laws they perpetuate inequalities they try to further enhance inequality the gap between rich and poor is increasing continuously and the existing policies are such that they will continue to increase this inequality and so there is a need of volunteers entrepreneurs to come forward and discuss about laws and measures and bring about greater inequality look at the most important part of the financial system most important part of the uh, any democracy that is banking system it is the banking system which is the backbone of the financial system it is the banking system which gives empowerment to the common people unfortunately banks don't give loans to common people to small entrepreneurs to micro entrepreneurs remember banks give loans to large enterprises they don't wish to give loans to small enterprises or to micro entrepreneurs or to a common person it's a very big problem and because of that most of the problems are taking place if you look at last seven eight years in india every year about 40 to 50 thousand crore rupees of loans are written off it's a huge amount 40 to 50 thousand crore rupees of loans are written off regarding loans given to large enterprises large enterprises fail and when they fail their loans are written off nothing happens because these large companies are limited companies they are limited liability companies the owners are different the companies run differently and therefore there there are litigations the litigations continue and the written loans are bad debts are written off because as per as per npa norms there are certain norms which the reserve bank of india formulates as per that banks write off the loans of course the loans the the cases etc continue for a long period of time but if you look at this amount 40 to 50 thousand crore rupees are written off as loans given to large loans if this much of amount is given to the poor people the small entrepreneurs micro entrepreneurs what will happen poverty will end banks don't give because they say the loan will become bad debts we are already having bad debts of 40 to 50 thousand crores every year so what's wrong if you allocate 40 to 50 thousand crore just for giving loans to micro and small entrepreneurs there will be a completely different economy the banks don't give loans banks have so many arguments banks say we are not able to assess our, the credit history of the micro entrepreneurs we are not able to assess this thing that thing civil score is not able to be calculated things like that so many arguments are there so there is a need to raise voice against this system there is a need of new institutions which can give loans to micro entrepreneurs small entrepreneurs all public sector banks work alike they don't work differently that's a big problem and that's why the government has been forced to merge them because when they are working with same policy all the public sector banks are working with same policy what's the need of keep, keep keeping 10 20 banks have four or five banks that's sufficient enough for competition they are not following different policies they are following same policy every bank now the reserve bank says we will encourage somebody who comes forward and establishes a bank exclusively for micro entrepreneurs for small entrepreneurs and we will encourage somebody who comes up and establishes a bank exclusively for collecting small deposits and that's why we have seen emergence of small and medium entrepreneurship bank sme banks which exclusively target giving loans to small entrepreneurs although they are established primarily to give loans to micro and small entrepreneurs but the fact is they are also trying to copy larger banks and they also try to give loans to 
medium entrepreneurs not to small entrepreneurs so these kinds of policies are creating a huge problem for our growth we are not able to grow we are not able to end poverty because of these policies we need micro institu- micro finance institutions we need such institutions which can help the common people to get loan we need these kinds of institutions we need those organizations which can come forward to support the poor those organizations that can give loans consultancy and financial support to the micro entrepreneurs to the small entrepreneurs you talk to any small uh, shopkeeper any small micro entrepreneur any small trader any small uh, uh, maybe a, a thadi wala or maybe a small shopkeeper or businessman proprietor most of these are these 40 crore such entrepreneurs are there in india 40 crores and there is no bank to give them financial support to give them loans and what can be remarkable is if one bank comes which says yes we will give loans to these micro entrepreneurs i can tell you none of these loans are going to become bankrupt and these entrepreneurs will be able to thrive these entrepreneurs will be able to grow it is because of the poverty at the level of uh, the banking executives and our planners that's why we are having poverty at grassroots level india has poverty which is because of the uh, poor policies the poor systems that we have formulated poor economic and uh, financial policies that we have formulated because of that we are having poverty so the best route to end poverty is to change these policies these policies are responsible for the gap between rich and poor so we have to bring about changes in this so we need entrepreneurs like mohammed yunus you know mohammed yunus from bangladesh he came forward he realized that banks are not giving loans to small entrepreneurs who actually need loans so yes he, he started giving loans from his own money initially and slowly and slowly he went on to establish gramin bank which tried to give loans to very few poor people and what was the result because of these efforts some 2 lakh people converted from beggars into micro entrepreneurs these kinds of things brought amazing results and every country today wants to emulate wants to copy the model created by mohammed yunus i am saying there is no need to copy you create your own models because every country has different condition different situations you create new models but focus on the poor people the existing banks the financial institutions that are working now they are not going to foster these uh, the the micro entrepreneurs we need new systems everybody including bureaucrats try to you know create problems for micro entrepreneurs and this corona crisis who are the worst affected these are the micro entrepreneurs and they are not even permitted to open their shops every police officer every bureaucratic uh, bureaucrat will come and say close down your shops the large companies are able to run their businesses online but there is no shop for these micro entrepreneurs how do they work nobody is coming forward and saying that okay we will set up online shops for these companies they can also operate we will establish some mechanism so that these micro entrepreneurs can also operate another pe- group of people who are worst affected today are laborers unorganized laborers migrant laborers you might have seen large number of workers laborers are moving on highways walking down covering distances of 1000 2000 3000 kilometers you might have seen on television that workers from delhi are going walking down straight to madhya pradesh to maharashtra to telangana and workers from maharashtra are going walking down to bihar they are walking now nobody is thinking about their transportation what a problem what a tragedy it is that if it had been a rich person the government would have given a chartered plane but because these are migrant workers these are very poor workers nobody is coming forward nobody is giving any plan nobody is talking about them so there is a need to give priority 
to these migrant workers. There is a need to give support to these migrant workers. This is the need of the hour. So we need to have policies and practices which can support these migrant workers. They should be given encouragement. We should have social security system for them. Every migrant worker should be registered. They should, every migrant worker should get some small financial support every month from the government. You can give, the government may give only 200 rupees per month in their bank account, no problem. But some support should be there so that if by chance they are not able to work in a month, at least they can buy most essential products to eat, to feed themselves, to survive. That must be there from the government side. Every migrant worker should be registered by the government. And for this, what is the most important requirement? The most important requirement is you should have your apps in regional languages. You should have your systems in regional languages. You cannot create laws, regulations, apps, etc. in English and expect the poor people to comply. They do not know. They do not know English. They cannot do all these things. So you have to enable the softwares, the laws, the procedures, the, the systems in local languages, vernacular language, local languages. And you have to recruit such bureaucrats who understand local language. Today the unfortunate thing is when the government is recruiting somebody, the written test is that of English. Now the person gets particular training in English, but the person says, I do not know the local language. And he feels uh, he has an inferiority complex in speaking local language. He doesn't speak in local language. And this should be considered a crime. And these officers should be thrown out from the government departments. The migrant workers or the workers who are working at grassroots level, they only know their local language. They have never been to schools. They have never been to education system. They are poor because they are not educated. Now it is our responsibility to support them, to help them. They cannot learn English. They cannot learn Hindi or other languages. They will speak in their own languages. Now, what is required here is that the government must ensure that when it is recruiting, it should recruit only those persons who should, who are proficient in local language and who commit that yes, they will talk to the people at, at grassroots level in their local language and they will help the local language in their local languages in their in the development of the local languages. The local languages in India are very rich, they are not poor. If you think that English is a rich language and local languages are poor, no, that's not the case. The Indian local languages are very, very rich, far richer than English language. English might be having five lakh words, while the local languages are having far number of, far more number of words. Rajasthani language, which has not yet been recognized, it is still what you call as Marwadi or Rajasthani language, it is still unrecognized language and it is having about 10 lakh words far more than English or any other language. It's a very rich language. It has a lot of literature. It is pathetic that the government has not recognized it. And what happens if a person is appointed in Rajasthan as government officer, as collector, and he doesn't speak in Rajasthani language, he doesn't speak in Marwadi language. And not only that, he will forbid his colleagues from speaking in the local languages. And this practice continues. The teachers, the government teachers, they also don't speak local, local language. And they prohibit students from speaking local language. When they are posted in villages, they start shouting at rural children who start speaking in local language. This creates inferiority complex in the minds of the youth that we do not know Hindi, we do not know English, we, do, we only know local language and our language is very poor and we are very poor people. This is wrong. The local language is very rich. It was just because we were subjugated by the Britishers and that's why our local languages were considered backward. Britishers imposed its policies. Why should we continue with those policies? We should encourage teachers, government officers, government department executives that they should speak in the local language with the local people. And the government schools should encourage studies in local language also. The government teachers should write their articles in local languages. The government uh, professor, university professors, the government university teachers, they must 
extensively write in the local languages. It is their duty to an encourage and develop local languages. The recruitment of government department must include local language element so that people who know the local languages only are selected and they should have pride and they should have respect in speaking local languages. Then only we can bring, you know, development. What I am saying is the development of the bottom of pyramid, right? It, all the policies that you notice today, all the policies, they are primarily designed to create an elitist society. They are primarily to help uh, elite class of the society to develop. They are all faulty policies and that's why there is a need to uh, uh, transform these policies, to change these policies and there is a need that people like you should come forward and should raise the voice of the local people, should help the local cultures thrive, should try to raise the voices to create such policies which can help the local people to grow. Those policies, all laws, all acts which are formulated by Britishers, they must be scrapped and new policies should be formulated keeping in mind the common people in perspective, keeping in mind the, the, the common people's language, the common people's heritage, the common people's culture, that should be kept in mind. Our objective should not be to convert Indian people into Britishers. Our, uh, our objective should not be to train everybody in English language. Our purpose should be gay, should be to empower everybody, to uh, recognize the power with the common people, to recognize the rich heritage of India, to recognize the richness of Indian culture, heritage, art, traditions, language. That is That should be our purpose and that can be attained only if we reverse these policies. If we will reverse, we will be able to attain uh, equality of income. We will be able to attain egalitarian society, which is our goal. Egalitarian society means people are more or less equal. And the policies are such which create egalitarian society. The kind of policies that we have today is such that we will have elitist society. Elitist society will be like one group of people will be like Reliance people, Dhirubhai Ammani, Rukesh Ammani and that kind of people will be very very rich, affluent class. And there will be other class would be migrant workers, laborers who would be leading a life of dogs because they will not be treated with respect, they will not be considered with respect, they will be looked at uh, uh, as if they are not good people, they are not uh, good human beings. This is the policy now. Look at the entire policy framework, look at the approach that the officers adopt, look at the approach that the police officers adopt, police constables adopt, right? If a very poor migrant worker is found, a police uh, man will go and start thrashing that poor person. If a rich person is going in Mercedes car, the police officer will not say anything to that person. What kind of these policies are there? What kind of practices are there? They need to be reversed and this reversal can come only through your initiative. And that's why I'm asking you, be social entrepreneur, come forward to transform the society. If you will not transform, who will do it? <laughs>